Hi friends, I'm Olga Kölsch and welcome back to my studio. Recently we were painted a randomly chosen page from this book and today I took another page from one of your suggestions because it's peony, it's peony season and that's my favorite flowers. I could paint them all year long. So let's paint peony from this book. So the page 318 was suggested by Rachel and I know she's very long painting with me and I'm so much happy to paint something for you Rachel and for everyone who enjoys pennies. First of all, let's have a look on the composition. It's uh, three buds. And for painting, I will use quinacridone rose. Very, very diluted. Even more, even more, even more, even more. And firstly, with a bigger brush, I will map out the future bud. Just very very roughly i'm painting the shape it's uh, more like creating a blob <laughs> but not really a blob but um, preparing background for our future penny uh, while the paper is still wet i could add a little bit more of darker tones around the edge and in the middle um, in areas where um, the main bud connects to these tilted opened um, petals because that's the most shady part a little bit shades around with the tip of the brush, I could go to the areas um, which are not wet and create some crispy, um, crispy edges. And with soft brush, I could drag out the color. The more light um, you start to paint, the more white areas you will leave, the easier it will be for you to grow up the flower, add details and not overdo it, not make it too, too dark and too heavy. For now I will keep it like this and in the same style I will paint, I will prepare the area it's a bit too dark. Prepare the area for for the second bud. You um, see, I just map out the future area with big, thick brush strokes. I leave a lot of white spaces between my brush strokes. And um, on this stage, I don't go for details into details i'm sorry i really appreciate that you very tolerant to my uh english uh to my accent uh, it helps me a lot sometimes when i'm in the flow i forget words and it's really nice that you give me such a warm nice feedback i very very much appreciate everything you you write mean comments it's great it's, well, it's really so pleasant and that keeps me moving and creating so while paper is wet we could add a little bit more of details and spots but again not over we are not overdoing it and in the same style we are um, placing the third bud. It's important to try to avoid be too symmetrical. So the second bud shouldn't be right under the first bud. 
here on the picture it's shifted a little bit to this side but we do not have that space so let's shift it a little bit to the right yes right right to the right and same thing we just with thick brush strokes we're mapping out they're mapping out um, the future the future board and I a lot I improvise a lot when I paint it I try to paint each bud with a little bit different angle with a little bit different distribution of brush strokes just for for the variety and um, it's important to keep in mind that right now we are not painting life um, like botanical illustration we when we paint loose we our goal is to bring the idea the flow of the flower it should be on the one hand recognizable so everybody say oh that's peony that's not carnation for example um, but on the other hand it should be very soft delicate and if you think about impressionists that was uh, that's what we are aiming to have we paint in our impression of, of the flower on one hand and trying to keep it a little bit recognizable on the other hand and if you want to boost your watercolor skills if you want to focus more on botanical illustration traditional botanical illustration then you like to dive into details i invite you to join my art school membership where i paint more attention to details and um, traditional techniques and we work um, more precisely on flowers so we have now three buds let's put them on a stem because once you put flowers on a stem that suddenly looks like a nice lovely picture right so over here on the reference stems are pretty straight I personally do not like straight stems I always try to add some curves and let's start from the top one yeah, let's find the place firstly one stem remember that each stem has to be logically finished so don't drop it somewhere um, that stem how to find the right place for a stem you find the middle of your flower usually it's in the middle of your blob or, or, or it uh, could be very nicely seen sometimes and start to make your line from that point imagine your line from that point so it will be about here 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 and the third one I like how it grows here I but I'm a bit unsure I think that could work if I yes if I <laughs> now comes the fun part we imagine how things could look like a bit different um, let's paint some greenery right away why not uh, this leaf how to paint leaves you um, start with the tip of your brush apply pressure on the body of the brush and then release the pressure and you go back to the top point slide down and release the pressure pinnies they have very certain middle line and uh, that's what we are aiming to to do it's Um, I use uh, the reference for um, for their composition and I really like how this 
flower this uh, this leaf placed here press to your brush a little bit of wiggling is always nice and bring it down we can't see the place where the leaf connects to the stem so we just do not release the pressure at the end and leave it just grow inside and um, next what we could, can do next I like this one the folded the tilted leaf let's do it firstly with very diluted color we paint this folded area there a little more pressure less pressure and then add a little bit I will add a little bit of burnt sienna I use just olive green um, but um, you could use you could mix your tallow green with yellow and a hint of burnt sienna to get that shade or you for example if you like more a bit of a different shade of green you could use tallow green with burnt sienna just, oh, that was a little bit too much Let's not solve. Uh, in principle, it's, it's all already looks nice, right? Mm, I'm very tempted to leave it like it is. But nevertheless, let's do a bit more of details. I use my quinacridone balls, but a little bit more bold. And I purposefully use just one color. I think it's very important, especially in the beginning. I know it's very easy to be blown away with the choice of colors which um, you could add into your palette, which sells into art shops really easy. And well, I know this hamster feeling that you could and you want to have everything but it's it would be really great if you pick up one color and try to paint the whole flower the big flower just with one color using the different shades for example right here i use quinacridone and rose and uh, it really um boost your painting skills. Once you master painting with one color, with one shade, it would be so much easier for you to add more and more and more and more colors. Uh, so right now, sorry for always talking a little bit off the topic, um, right now I paint, I'm painting shades. So if you think about this picture in black and white, right now I'm painting black uh, areas. And it's always nice to emphasize the middle part a little bit more, make it very, very certain. And under make it very certain, I mean paint it with all the color and find a really logical place where, where it will be. Uh, another important thing is to find the place of the shades because um, with pinning there is the upper part of the flower and these open <laughs> petals um, and the border between them it's very very shady and dark area so that's where we would like to add a little bit of darker tone I have some leftovers in my palette and it's quinacridone rolls mixed with burnt sienna but as I said it's it's nice if you try to stretch just one color in, in uh, all this range of shades. Uh, 
uh, I touch the paper it's even it feels more like I just touch the paper with the tip of the brush in some areas to create these shades and uh, shape the shape um, the petals the structure and I, I wash my brush I soften the edges where when the necessary it's necessary and I, I want to stop here with this now with this one Queen Aquila draws a little bit more of uh, darker tone in the middle emphasizing a few petals darker tones painting shades and while we are painting I'm, I'm, I'm wondering um, if you could tell me the most difficult parts for you when you paint with watercolor what are you struggling with is it um, water control is it color color schemes is it the just speed of the paint and the paper issues so everything what bothers you i would really would really like to know and i could focus a little bit more on helping you with these issues i think it would be really nice um, um, let's add a little bit more it's just quinacridone rolls very bold right from the palette and see how it creates this contrast I like painting in the mixed technique when I use sometimes areas which are still wet, areas which are still dry. And um, I think that adds to the impression. The flower softening, softening the edges. It's nice. with this part let's paint the bottom one um, this bottom one has a very messy middle and I I try to just imitate it with brush strokes sometimes I apply a little bit more pressure a little bit less of pressure and the more I go to the outside area the more I add the shades and I um, like to use that background we already had for example this white area I want to leave it like it is because it reflects the sunshine and it would be different from our reference but that's absolutely all right no need to follow it mm, try to stick to it no matter what we use references especially these floral references books um, as painting idea as an inspiration maybe some source of color understanding of um, bouquets mixing but we are not um, I'm aiming to copy that, not at all. More and more details. So I see that in this area, it's a lot of small little details. So I just, with the tip of the brush, I create something chaotic. 
in the middle and I divide a few um, few areas I could soften a little bit some darker colors to imitate this fluffy part I paint brush strokes uh, sliding my brush Keep it very almost uh, parallel to the paper and so just slide in with the brush and try to use different directions for your brush and different length of strokes so the goal is to avoid being too symmetrical being too predictable and enjoy the process that's i think the main the main reason why we are painting with real techniques in these times of artificial intelligence grow is just because it's it feels very pleasant very relaxing it's um mind healing it's it has a lot of benefits for our mental health so no need to stress out <laughs> that was my point and um, nice bud is ready mm, let's add few details into them mm, into the leaves into the green it's um, flower green mixed with olive green and I will maybe a little bit more of fun part how to connect everything mm, let's have a look if it looks nice see um, I over I painted this leaf on the top of the stem once I emphasize the stem a little bit the leaf hides behind the stem and it adds an extra volume extra layers same here if i paint over one more layer it will create this nice shady part and as a final touch let's add pink tips for pin pinis leaves if you like beanies if you observe them you'll know that beanies they always have this pinky edge on their leaves so that's what we are doing now and that really helps us to bring everything together of course you could go for more and more details but it's all also nice to stop right now Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you enjoy the process. I hope you like it very much. Please let me in comments which flower you would like to paint next or maybe what are your main difficulties with painting watercolor. It's very important for me to know. I read each and every comment you leave and you are very welcome to join my art school to boost your botanical painting skills and see you next time on this channel bye bye